An entitled man throws a temper tantrum when I won't let him break our health code at our restaurant. He even goes as far as throwing a metal chair over our patio, nearly taking out two women in the process. And to this day, I am still blown away by this man's entitlement. Here's what happened. So this happened several years ago during my tenure as a server at a restaurant in an area that has lots of tourists. I have an entire smorgasbord of wild stories, along with your average restaurant no one matured past high school work environment. Without getting too specific about where I was, the restaurant was somewhat dog-themed in the name, as well as in two of the decorations, but outside of that, it was largely just a pub-style restaurant. But with our name, most folks expected us to be a dog-friendly establishment. Unfortunately, shortly before I started working there, the health department had begun to crack down on restaurants in the area for allowing dogs in, which was against the health code. As such, in an effort to live up to our name, management chucked off an arm and a leg to get permission permission to have a dog-friendly section on the patio. Part of the permission came with several rules, such as dogs can't sit in chairs or on tables, dogs must be on their leash or in a carriage, dogs must have separate entrances and exits, stuff like that. If you sit down and think about it, it does make sense, and it's there to protect people who have an allergy or might have a phobia or any other reason to avoid a dog in public. So, the following story happened shortly before my 20th birthday in the middle of summer. It was cloudy, it was humid, bugs were flying, and absolutely no one wanted to sit on the patio. I was the hostess that day and I felt really bad for my patio server who wasn't getting any business. That is until our middle-aged entitled Karen appears to make things worse. She says to me, Hi, my husband and I have a dog and we were hoping to sit on the patio. I look at her and I say, Great, just give me a second and I'll get you set up in the dog-friendly section. I collect their menus and lead the entitled Karen outside to find her husband, who is the entitled Kevin of this story, along with a cute elderly bee eagle already sitting in the dog free section. For the record, all the patio tables had little signs on them denoting them as dog friendly or dog free just to make it easy on people. So this entitled Kevin had he been using his eyes could have easily solved our first encounter before it happened. Me in the chippiest customer service voice said, hi there sir just so you know you're in the dog free section right now but if you move over just one table you will be in the dog friendly section and we can get you started. This entitled Kevin looks up from his phone and his dark, beady eyes meet mine. He says to me in a seething tone, Are you serious? Now, at this point, I'm a bit taken back by the hostility at such a basic request, but I'm no novice to awful customers. I repeat the rules and explain that it's due to the restaurant needing to follow the health code. He continues to protest, and his wife jumps in and starts pleading that it's just one table. Why don't we just move? And now I feel even worse for her. Finally, he throws his hands up in the air and shouts out loud, Fine, but if my dog gets hit by a car, are you the one that I'm going to sue? Now, for some context, the dog-friendly section was adjacent to the sidewalk, which was adjacent to the road. So if you were going to be hit by a car, it was technically the most likely spot, but it also had never happened in the restaurant's multi-decade lifespan. At this point, my irritation meter is firmly in the red, as I realize he's one of those entitled jerks, the one who spit and threaten when they don't get their way. But I shoot an even smile, and I say to him, that's probably a question for my manager. This entitled Kevin looks at me and says, yeah, or your attorney. He really thinks that he got me with that zinger as I'm sitting him down in the dog-friendly section, but really, I'm just hiding my laughter, because these are the most pathetic kinds of people we serve. I then just warn his server that he's a jerk, and I go on with my day. I later bring out a bowl of water for the dog because it's hot and gross, and the poor thing shouldn't be dehydrated. It was standard practice for us to bring dogs water while their owners ate. I set it down, and this guy immediately starts screaming at me. Is that tap water or bottle water. Now, me fighting every urge to deadpan, I say to him, it's tap water, sir. Would you like me to go out and buy bottled water? At this point, the dog begins drinking it, and the entitled Kevin slams his hand down on the table and starts to shout even more. Well, it's too late now. Let's hope it's not poisoned. Now, the guy has me wondering if his dog is up to date on its shots, or if he's an anti-vaxxer. His server told me later on that he poured out the water, and I have no clue if she was referring to his water or his dog's water, but he had loudly complained that there were bugs in it. Now, I'd like to remind you, dear reader, that it was a disgustingly humid, muggy summer day, and this man decided to eat outside. While I do understand the initial revulsion at seeing a bug in your meal or drink, he was in the bug's world, dear reader, not ours, and we have no control over that. But regardless, we still replaced his water. About 20 minutes later, his entree is ordered. He and his wife are eating an appetizer, the dog is chilling, and some other mad soul walks inside and asks to sit on the patio. 
patio. And just to be petty, I put him in the chair the entitled Kevin had originally commandeered. But then I look over. The entitled Kevin had his beagle in his lap while he was eating his food. If you remember from earlier when I was explaining some of the mandates we got from the health department, one of them was that dogs can't sit in chairs or on tables. And while some of you might contest it, the dog being in his lap constituted being in a chair in the health department's eyes. Now, I don't want to deal with this, but I knew that between me and his server, on the one in a million chance that a health official just happened to walk by and see us breaking the rules, one of us would get thrown under the bus. So, as the entitled Karen goes inside to order a drink from the bar, I slap on my customer service voice and I stroll over to the table. I look at this man and I say, Hi, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but I need to tell you that it's unfortunately against the health code for your dog to be in the chair with you. The entitled Kevin goes silent for a few moments, just sitting there and simmering. Then he says to me, show me the health code. I look at him and I say, excuse me? He responds by saying, I'm not doing anything else unless you show me the health code. At this point, my patience is wafer thin. This man is finding ways to push all the most annoying buttons rather than just following a basic rule and letting all of us go on about our days. Rather than continuing with him and risk losing my temper, I go back inside to cool down and find a manager. I find one, we go to the office, and she prints out the list of rules emailed to us by the health department. Then she holds up the paper to me and says the following. Now this can go one of two ways. I can take this down to him and you never have to see him again, or you can take this down to him and get that smug satisfaction feeling of telling a jerk that you were right. Now this is where I may have gone wrong, dear readers. For, you see, I really didn't want to see this man ever again. His beady black eyes, his thin, grease black hair, his rubbery white skin. The man looked like death himself. Stoking that fire to satiate my ego could go terribly wrong. And trust me, that's a bit of foreshadowing. But on the other hand, I really, really wanted that smug, satisfied feeling of telling a jerk that I was right. I mean, what can I say? I wasn't even 20 years old. Mustering my courage, I take the paper, and as I walk back outside, I internally hype myself up until I'm strutting over to the entitled Kevin's table. And it's then that I hand him the paper. I look at him and I say, Hi, sir, here's the health code, as you requested. As you can see here, it says we cannot allow dogs to sit in the chairs or we get a massive fine. The entitled Kevin takes the paper and peers down to the rules carefully, then analyzes the whole paper as if looking for some kind of loophole. But he must not have found one because instead, he throws the paper on the ground and says to me, you can shove that paper right up your butt. Only he didn't say butt, if you know what I mean. This man finally gave me a reason to drop the customer service voice, which for the record is a very light and high-pitched voice, and my normal talking voice is surprisingly deep and not as joyful. So I glared down at this entitled Kevin, I drop to my normal vocal register, and then I growl at him. I say to him, Sir, put the dog on the ground or you can leave. Now this startled him at first, but he, being a man with an attorney, and me being a short little waitress working for pennies after all, regathers himself rather quickly. He scoops up his dog in his arms, stands up, then takes his heavy metal chair and flings it behind him. It goes under our railing and nearly strikes two random women walking by. And then, dear reader, the pièce de résistance. He sits down on the ground with his dog in his lap. Now, at this point, I've seen a lot in my service industry career. I can handle someone throwing a temper tantrum, but I can't handle someone throwing a chair. Luckily, the two women he'd nearly assaulted knew exactly what to do. They leer over him from behind the railing and begin screaming. They go full Karen for justice mode on this guy's butt. The more they scream, the more he shrinks. And we had attracted a small crowd of attention. Then they turn their gaze upon me. They say to me, Oh my gosh, sweetie, are you okay? You know we're from Brooklyn and even we find this appalling. Suddenly, I snap back to reality and realize I'd been rescued. I laugh and join the conversation with the women, with the pouting man between us. I not so subtly bemoan the immaturity and entitledness I saw on a daily basis. And overall, they were very sweet. Finally, the server comes back with the entitled Karen wife in tow. She had been inside the whole time, completely unaware of her husband's outburst. She looks utterly horrified and ashamed. Their server lets me know the manager is on their way immediately. We file inside and all the employees crowd around a nearby window to watch as our manager goes out. The entitled Kevin keeps sticking his finger in her face, speaking through gritted teeth, looking like he's about to pop a vessel. All the while, his wife is mortified, and our manager is just completely bored. Finally, after some back and forth, he finally leaves. My manager comes back inside and tells us, okay, he called me many names and told me to get lost, but if he ever comes back, we are definitely calling the police. And honestly, I'm still blown away by this guy's entitlement.
moment. Wow, that's a crazy situation to be stuck in. The second that guy threw that metal chair across the patio is the second I would have called the police right away. Like, that's definitely not going to happen, and I just would not put up with that. But overall, good for you for handling this so well. Like, I really do think that you handled this perfectly and like a complete professional, because that guy was acting insane, and you did not deserve that kind of treatment in the slightest. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for not wanting to help my younger sister financially? All because she and her husband are definitely not good with money, because right now they're calling me a jerk for saying no, and at this point, I don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my sister is in her late 30s, she's married, has no kids, and has two previous bankruptcies. Her and her husband both work in banking and made a good living that they left to chase the real estate money. In 2021, our parents let them know how big of a mistake we all thought this was going to be. I mean, everyone saw what was coming. They worked for a couple of years under one realtor, then buying one out last year, and they are now financially in trouble as they aren't moving homes. We have always been very supportive of her, despite her being in her mid-30s, almost losing her house twice, almost having her car repossessed, and really only wants to be a part of the family when she needs money. I've always been fortunate with my career and my husband with his. So, when she comes to me, I always oblige, but I just don't want to this time. Now, here's a solid example of how it goes when I lend her money. 15 years ago, when they were losing their home in 2009, after they both lost their jobs due to the housing crash, my husband loaned them $50,000 to be repaid as they could, which, first and foremost, was absolutely our fault. But we never got anything but the initial thank you for saving us. And only then, 10 years later, did we get the notion of, oh, yay, we finally paid you off. It was as if we owed them this money, and it was our honor to lend that cash to them free of charge and at a repayment plan that was comfy for them. Later on, we found out that our parents lent them a lot of money that they haven't paid a single cent towards. Last Christmas, after not seeing them for five years, and their arrival being somewhat of a surprise, the conversation moved towards real estate. Things got a little heated when our father asked them about the market and how that was affecting them. On cue, they blamed everyone else but themselves on how they were, get this, blindsided and there were just huge eye rolls all around. Our father ended the conversation by saying, well, just don't come to your mom or I or your family if you need money again. And as a note, I didn't tell them that I loaned them money previously. Fast forward and last week, my sister called me out of the blue and let me know that due to everyone else's fault but her own, despite the fact that it's always been her fault, they simply can't make the numbers work and they could use a lift. Now, when she said this, I was speechless, but I should have known that it was a money call. When she finally asked if she could borrow some money again, I just replied by saying that's not a good idea. Now, I should have said like a thousand other things, but that's all I could muster up. I expanded to tell her that it's not a good investment for us because of her track record with us and the banks, and I asked why she ignored all of us throughout this real estate journey. As she hung up, she said to me, you and your husband really are jerks. So honestly, are we the jerks? We have the money, and she is family, and she did repay us previously, but I just don't feel like I owe her anything. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. No, you're not the jerk. It really sounds like your sister's just trying to get free money out of you. And it, what, took her 10 years to pay you back $50,000? Like, I understand that's a lot of money, but that's also a long time to pay you back. And based on her attitude towards other family members, like, I would be hesitant to lend her any money too if I was in your shoes. It doesn't sound like she's super reliable, and it doesn't seem like she takes responsibility for anything that she does, and only, like, blames the people around her all the time. And what, she's had two bankruptcies? Like, come on. That is really sketchy, and personally, I would not want to give any money towards that kind of person. So no, you are definitely not the jerk, and I personally don't blame you for being hesitant. My entitled parents spent my grandmother's money while she was incapacitated, choosing to buy a $50,000 car instead of using it on something meaningful for my grandmother. And to this day, I still feel angry about it, and I don't know if I'm the jerk in that regard. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so my grandmother has been gone for almost two months, and it's just destroying me. I was extremely close to her and she was honestly the best grandmother and the best person anyone could ever ask for. She would literally give anyone the shirt off her back and she always offered to give me money even though 9 times out of 10 I would turn it down. Unfortunately, near Thanksgiving of last year, her health took a nosedive and she was unable to walk. Then she got pneumonia which left her incapacitated. It was heartbreaking seeing her go from an active woman who would walk up to 2 times a day down to being bedridden and suffering. My mom, who is obviously a Karen, is completely 
completely different from my grandmother. She is extremely spoiled and very selfish. She was basically given everything she has in life by my grandparents and father. She sits there and wastes her day in front of the computer or the television, and it's so aggravating. And she always treated my grandmother like trash. She would always yell at her over dumb things, and my grandmother would even go out of her way to clean my parents' home. And the ungrateful jerks would just yell at her because she put a few things out of place. And anytime my grandmother would ask me for anything, my mom scoffed and would take an attitude with her. It got to the point where my grandmother stopped visiting my parents and would only do so when I came to visit. She would ask her friends and neighbor to help her instead of my mom because she always got berated by her. So when my grandmother's health started taking a turn for the worst, my parents gained control of her finances and became the power of attorney, which is a common thing. But what they did next was very insatiable, and I don't know if I can ever forgive them for this. While my grandmother was passing away in the nursing home, they decided to use her money to purchase themselves a brand new car. They spent well over $50,000 on the car. They told me that they only did what the lawyer asked them to do, and they were afraid that since my grandmother's nursing home costs would be astronomical, that the state was going to take her money. So they feel like they saved her estate by doing this. I don't know if I'm being petty by being mad about it, but I feel that was so selfish of them. I told my mother-in-law about this and she said she was advised to do the same thing, except she spent the money on stuff she needed for the nursing home and the funeral cost, but not on a car. So honestly, am I the jerk for being upset about this or do I have every right to be mad? Because right now I seriously don't know what to do. I think you're completely justified for being upset with your parents because clearly they took advantage of your grandmother just to get $50,000 out of her. Like they didn't use any of that money correctly when she passed away and they clearly just use that for a car instead of, I don't know, nursing home costs and funeral costs. Like it sounds like your mother-in-law had that figured out, but your parents clearly just were super spoiled. So I'm honestly so sorry that your parents acted like that towards your grandmother because it sounds like your grandmother really was a good person, but at least you now know moving forward the type of people they're going to be. Because clearly if money's involved, then the worst aspects of these people are definitely going to come out. Am I the jerk for not telling my mom and her husband that I was planning on graduating early? Because right now they are very upset with me. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I'm a 15 year old female and I was forced to move away from everything that I knew all because my mom married a man and he forced us to move so he could be closer to his family. But we had to be separated from mine. The first day I went to my new school, I just knew it was going to be a messed up year because I got in trouble the first day that I went there. Some people were nice to me and told me that if I wasn't happy, I should try to graduate early. And that's honestly what I did. I went to my counselor and she got me set up. And I'm now taking all my junior classes in hopes of graduating early. Now, here's the thing. I did not tell my mom or her husband about this, as I've been struggling to find a balance between my actual work and my online classes, as I started late in the semester and my classes are due on May 17th, so I am kind of behind. But with this program that I'm a part of, I kind of find some of the answers on the internet, so it's been getting a lot easier for me. The problem is, is that my mom's husband's son, who's 17, is graduating this year and they were talking about how the house was going to be empty when he's gone, but then they were also joking around, saying that at least they had me for another two years, and I told them that two years was crazy because I was graduating next year. They asked me what I meant by that, and I told them that I was graduating early as I was taking more junior classes online, and I was planning on taking the other half during the summer. They then got upset with me and asked me why I never told them, and I just said they never asked me about it, and I didn't think it was a big deal. I told them that my mom's husband's son already knew, so it's not like it was a secret. I just verbally didn't say anything. I told them that I don't understand why they're so upset, because they know now, and they would have found out soon when I started doing it over the summer as well. My mom told me that she was hurt that I wanted to get away from her so quickly, and I told her that I wasn't doing that to get away from her, but instead, I was doing that so I could be closer to my friends and family as I really miss them. My mom told me that she knows I didn't want to move, but she feels hurt knowing that I would be gone sooner than she anticipated. My mom's husband is upset with me too and genuinely confused. They're acting like I was keeping this huge secret from them when it honestly wasn't that deep. So honestly, am I the jerk for keeping this from my family? Because honestly, at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Honestly, I don't think this really was a secret to be completely honest, but I think you were slowly getting to the point where you could tell them exactly what you have planned for your education. Which, by the way, in my opinion, is completely up to you. If you want to graduate early and get out of this awful school that treats you like garbage, then go for it. Like, I wouldn't want to be at a school that treated me like that because for starters you don't like living there and it doesn't sound like everybody in that school is really treating you with respect
fact. So I definitely do not think you're the jerk at all. And seriously, like, so what if you graduate early? I've known plenty of people in my life who've gotten out of high school earlier than what other people have done, and things have worked out just fine. It's not like they were behind in life in any kind of way, and if anything, they were just able to start college sooner. And after all, they're the ones that uprooted your life and literally moved you away from your original high school to a place where you not only don't know anybody, but you also have no connection here. Like, you have no friends to look to, and that honestly is not fair. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I don't think you're the jerk, and honestly, the fact that your mom and her husband are getting upset, in my opinion, is really weird. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.